Dengue fever is a very serious problem around the world and it is becoming worse all the time. And back in the 60s and 70s, um, maybe nine countries were reporting cases of dengue fever. Today it's present in over 100 countries around the world and there are over 390 million cases on average every year. Dengue fever is a viral infection that's caused by mosquitoes and it is today the fastest spreading mosquito-borne disease in the world. Dengue historically has received less attention compared to other mosquito-borne diseases like malaria um, and this is part of the reason um, it's been classified as a neglected tropical disease by the World Health Organization. Total annual global costs of dengue fever are estimated to be approximately 8 billion US dollars, um, which is significantly higher than the costs of other infectious diseases. Dengue fever is a severe flu-like illness with symptoms including uh, a high fever, rashes, um, pains behind the eyes, and it's rarely fatal. Um, it comes in four strains, and if you were to catch it once and recover, you would then be immune to the first strain and then more vulnerable to the rest. So very often the second time you catch dengue fever is worse than the first and the second time is more likely to be fatal. The key problem with dengue is that um, it overburdens health systems when outbreaks happen. Um, it has been a major problem in countries in Latin America and Southeast Asia over recent decades and things seem to be getting worse um, because of increased urbanisation, um, travelling between different areas and also climate change. There is no cure for dengue fever, um, there is no antiviral treatment and there is no um, available vaccine at the moment. Measures to control dengue fever in Vietnam before we introduced DEMOS were reactive. So communities would wait for an outbreak to occur and then attempt to deal with it. If we're able to forecast outbreaks in advance, that allows them to reduce the number of cases caused by the outbreak or eliminate it altogether. So dengue ecology and the mosquito life cycle are regulated by the climate. Um, this means we have factors like rainfall, temperature, humidity, affecting how mosquitoes are breeding, where they breed, how long they live for. Um, and this is really important in order to be able to uh, predict an outbreak. Um, and with today's technology, we have access to all this meteorological climate information, which we can get from satellite data. Um, and this helps us develop statistical models of disease incidents that can then forecast outbreaks of dengue fever to issue warnings for an outbreak up to six months in advance. Um, at the same time, our colleagues at the UK Met Office were researching into seasonal weather forecasting, so forecasting parameters like precipitation, wind speed, air temperature up to six months in advance and our colleagues at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine uh, were researching into statistical epidemiology and that's relating um, cases of dengue fever in countries such as Vietnam to the environmental parameters being studied by ourselves and the Met Office. What happens is satellites uh, produce Earth observation data. Those products are made available by the space agencies around the world. We automatically download those products and post-process them. They get stored in the DEMOS database and models automatically run against them. Models to simulate surface water and models to simulate dengue fever. The results then go into a private website which the user community in country can access. Some of the users are at a governmental level and so they look at it more from a strategic point of view. Others are at a local level and they look at it more from an operational point of view. So Demos takes the form of a web page application and this is the main page of the system that you see here. So um, the end users log onto the system and they can see on the left hand side 
the map of Vietnam with the 63 provinces of the country. And these are color coded uh, based on the different probabilities of exceeding outbreak thresholds. Um, on the right hand side, the users can see the forecast of dengue cases for a particular province that they have selected. This map is interactive, so the users can click on different parts of the map um, and then the graph information gets updated to the specific province that they have clicked. The users can also play a movie that shows how um, the forecast is going to progress over the next six months and the colors of the map get updated accordingly. Below the graph, um, we have a table here that shows the forecasted probability of exceeding a specific outbreak threshold. And further below, we see the historical reported dengue cases for the province of interest. So the users can see uh, 20 years worth of historical dengue data and they can just click on and off to just show the different graphs that are of interest. At the bottom of the page, we have the transmission months, which indicate which months have appropriate hydrometeorological conditions that favor dengue transmission or not. So, so you can really see how this tool can be very powerful for helping with dengue control in Vietnam. Of course, everybody wants a system that is perfect and they want a system that tells them exactly what they think they need to know. But it takes a lot of engagement with the user community to get under the skin of their requirements and help them understand that the necessary limitations of any forecasting system. One of the key challenges we have faced from early on was um, convincing stakeholders that there is value in having access to a forecast, even if the forecast is not 100% right 100% of the time. And sometimes we get asked, you know, is there going to be two cases or is there going to be three cases? And are those cases going to be in this street or are those cases going to be in that street? And of course, it isn't possible to forecast that even two weeks in advance let alone six months in advance. And so we've been working with the user community to help them understand the limitations of the system, to help them understand probabilistic forecasting and interpreting forecasts in terms of threshold exceedance rather than numbers of cases, which is a more useful measure for their operational decisions. Demos incorporates a wide variety of innovations. Some of those innovations relate to handling Earth observation data and post-processing Earth observation data. Other innovations relate to post-processing and bias correcting forecasts. For example, forecasters know that there are biases in their forecasts. It's always a little bit high in one part of the year, a little bit low in other parts of the year. So we can correct those biases to create more accurate forecasts. Um, other innovations relate to the surface water parameter modeling that we've been doing and accurately mo um, modeling things like soil moisture and runoff. Other innovations relate to modeling the dengue fever statistically uh, the system incorporates a super ensemble. Um, it's a, a big data solution, so there's a lot of data we're handling as well and we need to process that effectively. But a lot of the innovations um, in the DEMOS system come relating to the user community and how the system and the data products we produce are portrayed so that they are relevant to the users at the right timescales. Earth observation is one of the key enabling sciences that have given us DEMOS. Earth observations act as an eye on the Earth, interpreting electromagnetic radiation that comes back to the sensors. But what we can do is we can take this mass of information that has been generated and that is improving all of the time, and we can add brain work to that to um, create useful applications from Earth observations. And so all of the available Earth observation data products have given us the opportunity to relate what a satellite can see to cases of dengue fever. And I never would have thought um, six months 
prior to the Deimos project that we'd be mentioning dengue fever in the same sentence as satellite Earth observations. Well, it's great to see operational systems of Deimos in Vietnam, in Sri Lanka and Malaysia. Of course, the overall vision is to see Deimos used in all countries that have a problem with dengue fever. Um, the vision is to see Deimos become a key part of the dengue control measures in those countries, reducing cases of dengue fever, saving low to middle income countries, budgets on their health system, saving lives and preventing people catching this very unpleasant disease.